Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? Doing all right, doing all right, doing all right. Day late, dollar short, but that's okay. That's okay. A um, little bit of family time, a little bit of family time, delay a day, but that's okay. Um, Kyle, we're here to talk about um, big upheaval in the Ohio State scheduling world, in the Big Ten scheduling world, actually. Um, no more divisions starting in 2024. I, I think we saw that part coming. Um, I think we saw, I think we saw no divisions coming that, that part's not surprising. Yeah. Um, you and I, um, it's been a few months ago. I think we did an episode. I think it was called, you know, what the big 10 will look like in 2030. Um, we have been, in, we have been saying it gangland, uh, but they weren't ready for that conversation. So what we were, I think what Kyle and I were predicting at that time was like a three protected rival protected rivalry um per team. So three teams against three protected rivals. Sort of like a pod system, but not exactly. Um and for what it's worth, I don't think that's out of the question for the future. I I do believe that this new 16 team Big 10 is a temporary stop. I think I still think the number is 20. I think the number is at least 20 in the Big Ten. I, you know, that, that you know, that's that, I think that's all probably for a few future episode. Uh, I don't know if we need to get into all of that right now. But I, I, I think Oregon, Washington, and then a pair of ACC teams. I would say UNC is one of them. And then we can have a big fight about who the other one is. I think there's a couple different candidates. Um, yeah. I, I, my money's on Virginia, but I, I won't swear to that, but I, but I think Washington, Oregon and the Tar Heels and the Cavaliers Cavaliers. I wouldn't be shocked if it was Duke. Um, I'm, I'm just I saying I wouldn't be shocked. Um, but anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. Um, what we're talking about today is what is going to be the schedule for at least the next two years, or at least the games, if not the full schedule. Um, what I think is maybe most surprising, although I'm not necessarily against it, is they came out with a list of protected rivals, which that part's not surprising. What's surprising is, is that it's not very uniform. Um, Ohio State has one protected rivalry game. That was a little surprise to me. Just, just one. Uh, yeah, Penn State has zero protected rivals. Iowa has three protected rivals. USC and UCLA only have each other. Uh, Michigan, uh, on top of Ohio State, has Michigan State. I guess my, my biggest surprise in all of this is just sort of the lack of uniformity in it. Um, uniformity is normally like that. that That's some Big Ten shit right there, right? Uniformity. Everything being even, everything being square, everything being just in the right place. Going outside of the box is not the Big Ten strong suit. And no. just sort of going freelance with this protected rivals situation. Again, I'm not against it. I'm just surprised that they did it. Um, that's, I think, my biggest surprise in, in this announcement. Um, let me run through them real quick. Michigan, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, Iowa, Maryland, Rutgers, Indiana, Purdue, Illinois, Purdue, Illinois, Northwestern, USC, UCLA. Those are your protected rivalry games. Penn State not on the list. Interesting. 
very helpful. Illinois with two, Indiana with one, Iowa with three, Maryland with one, Michigan with two, Michigan State with one, Minnesota two, Nebraska one, Northwestern one, Ohio State one, Purdue two, Rutgers one, UCLA, USC each with one, USC two. Penn State always Wisconsin said they were on oh, Wisconsin, me, two. Wisconsin two. <laughs> Penn State always said they were unrivaled. Yeah. And we always yeah. said not our rival. But it's it's weird. Ohio State and Penn State have played each other, but we were being funny. Yeah. Were we? Yeah. I mean, it, it's we've played each other every year since since Penn State joined the Big Ten in 1993. And there have been some classics in there. And again, I'm not even saying I'm against it. I'm not upset by it. I am surprised by it. Watch Joey Bosa go boom. Kyle, there's a sloop cat <laughs> version or a sloop cast version of that. I'm a little upset with you for not finding the sloop cast version, but whatever, we move forward. Um <laughs> Kyle, how how surprised are you? I, I also a Penn State game. <laughs> how surprised are you that Penn State and Ohio State not a protected rivalry? Yeah, I, I was. I'm sorry. I I thought you were going to continue on. There. I, I thought I was going to continue on too. <laughs> I definitely spoke with the with the cadence of someone who's going to continue on. I, I am surprised. Like Ohio State with just one, I definitely I th would have thought that each team would have had minimum two. Maybe some teams like Iowa would have three. Okay, but the vast majority of the teams only had one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you want to count Penn State, 10. 10 of the 16 have less than two games. Um. Uh, for the for, for those first two years there, I yeah, I'm definitely surprised. It, it does it reek? Does it reek of temporary to you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, this okay. is this is just temporary, just to get something out there. And I, I feel that in 2026, things will change. Either either additions to the Big Ten. What, what wait a minute. What what comes what what comes next in what you're about to say? The next phase of um of the expansion. I mean, but you, the way you said additions or like no no one's leaving. Well, I'm I'm at the <laughs> adding on to the Big Ten. Okay, yeah, in Washington, Oregon, UNC. Let's say Virginia. Uh, I, I would say, or, or probably have. Ohio State goes to the SEC. You know, the thing is, and I know we all hate that we lost to Georgia, but you know the thing I've seen over and over and over again this offseason? Our USC fans, excuse me, USC, our SEC fans saying that, quote, Ohio State is the closest thing to an SEC team out of the, outside of the SEC. This is a common thing I have seen repeated on Twitter, on r slash CFB, um, from the mouths of SEC fans. We lost that game, but we gained a ton of fucking respect in SEC country. Um, we took the best team in the country down to the wire, down to a field goal. Penn State gives more Mountain West vibes. Well, you're half right. You got the mountains right. Um, King of the North, indeed. <laughs> Again, Ohio State and Penn State played each other, have played each other every year since 1993. They played yeah, each I mean, other you, one last time in 2024. I mean, if you want to... Well, not if you one want, last like, time, that's dramatic, but... Yeah, I mean, if you want recognition of 
like having the best games for the year every year why are you not including Ohio State Penn State hashtag not our rival yes hashtag and by, by the way can we can we just formalize the Maryland Penn State rivalry <laughs> yeah let's let's just get one there Let, let's just get let's get that one in there I don't know um that's that's the biggest surprise to me and again I don't I don't hate it, but if we're being honest, when Michigan was down and just kind of not even a game there for a long time, like it's it, Penn State was never Michigan. It, that's just not how rivalries work. But man, it, it it felt that way. Like Penn State was the one game on the schedule, especially if it was a whiteout that you really had to watch out for. Yeah. All right, so let's let's look at Ohio State's schedule the the 2024 season here. Jared, jump over to the media share real quick. Um, oh, that works too. Yeah, well, it, it, we still have to talk because the podcast people, the audio only people can't see it. But um, yeah, in 2024, so um, Ohio State will play at home. Michigan State, Minnesota, Penn State, and UCLA. Uh, they will go on the road to Illinois, Iowa, Michigan, Northwestern, and Rutgers. So, I mean, you got you got Michigan State and Penn State at home. Okay, all right, that's that that's that's an okay to good home schedule, depending on how Sparty does. Um, and then UCLA, UCLA is always a wild card. Sometimes they may make a splash, but more often than not in recent years, they haven't. U UCLA, the UCLA has been like a 500, slightly above 500 team in a weaker Pac-12. Let's be honest. But then on the road, you got Michigan and Iowa. And we'll, we'll see. We'll see how illinois does but i'm not going to put them on the table yet but then you got michigan and iowa on the road for 24 so it's definitely favor definitely a favorable schedule for the big 10 conference for ohio state in the 24 season why are we playing michigan up north two years in a row uh because oh uh, we said those backwards they put the Did away we say games. Backward? They put the away oh. games in white. Stupid Big Ten. <laughs> yes, you are you right. Put, you why are why right. did you put the home games on top? Doesn't that make more sense? Yeah. Apologies. We said all of that backwards. Uh, Twenty twenty four is Michigan State, Minnesota, Penn State, UCLA on the road. Illinois, Iowa, Michigan, Northwestern, Rutgers at home. <laughs> I lost a stupid big, big 10. What are you doing big then? Ten. What are you doing, big 10? Jeez. Um, Kyle, actually, no. Uh, chat. We have, we have a few people in the chat right now. I have a question for the chat. I, mean, I have a question for the chat. Um, in 2024, with the addition of UCLA and USC, who are, who would you consider to be like the quote unquote big dogs of the Big Ten? How many teams and who are they? USC, Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State <laughs> says Austin. And he says that's easy. Spikes just said yes. Ohio State, USC, and Michigan, Gangland says. Buckeye Choir says yes. I assume to Austin and not to gangland um, based off of, yeah, based off of how quickly that came in. That, that was my assumption. PSU is fringe, but I'll let them have it. Austin completely agree. Um, Zach being Zach. Um, <laughs> all right. I, I agree. I agree with everything, Austin. Uh, throw whiskey as a potential to move into that tier. Maybe. Uh, no, not in that first year. And they 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 pull a hell of a schedule in 2024. Um, three of the four teams that 
we just sort of classified as the big dogs of the conference. That's a tough draw. Um, what I believe the Big Ten is doing here, and this is whole, held true I mean, through the first two, because we see we have the 2024 opponents and we have the 2025 opponents here. What I believe the Big Ten is attempting to do is to but, set up the four big dog teams and do it in such a way that they will play, you know, two of the three remaining big dog teams. Does that make sense? Am I, did I say that in a way that makes sense? You're, you're obviously one of them. You'll play two of the other ones. And the other I mean, did three big dog teams will do the same thing. I believe they're trying to set up some parody. Some years you can pull one. I, I, I think, no, I'm talking about the four teams. I is, screw the other 12 teams. I'm just talking about Ohio state, Penn state, Michigan, USC. But on that year, you get uh, whiskey, Iowa, UCLA, et cetera, <clears throat> et cetera. Maybe, but, but I think they should be able to set it up in a way. And I think they're going to try to. For the sake of parity among your top contending teams. To have each of the, you know. Each of the four big teams play two of the other big teams every year. So if you're Ohio State, in theory, that means you're obviously going to play Michigan every year, and then you're going to play either Penn State or USC, probably in cycling years, would be my assumption. We only have two, we only have two seasons, two seasons of opponents to work off of here. And of course, like I said, like I have said a few times now, if you add Oregon and Washington into the mix, that obviously changes things. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we can kid ourselves about, about saying that Penn State isn't, shouldn't be like considered a top dog team here. But if you look at the past seven years. The past seven years, they've been in the top 10 in the final rankings four of those seven years. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. We, we kid when we joke. We're just, they haven't really sniffed the playoffs yet, I think is the thing. USC so got has, close to the So playoffs. has the vast majority of teams in, the, in college football. I agree, but... Michigan's gone twice. Ohio State has gone. I, I don't even know off the top of my head. Uh, USC got close, got very close last year. Um, and then Penn State, Penn State, that's not true. They have sniffed. That's not true. They easily could have gotten in one year, but didn't. Um they, they, they could have gotten in over Ohio State one of those seasons. Um, five times. Uh, Austin says, especially with the playoffs expanding, they're lining themselves up to get as many teams in as they can. Uh, four, 10 and two, Big Ten teams with losses to uh, each other via Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State, and USC, all likely into the playoffs or at least on the fringe of it. Exactly, Austin. But, but also keep in mind, also keep in mind that there is a Big Ten championship game, which will no longer be, you know, tied to divisions. So it's possible that you pick up that third team. Or you play one of the other two teams again. So, I mean, but that's a hell of a resume for the team that wins that, right? I, but but I think that's the point is you're you're trying to spread you're trying to make sure that those games happen but you're also trying to spread them out so that like Ohio State doesn't have to 
beat Penn State, USC, Michigan, and then win the Big Ten championship all in the same year on their way to the playoffs. But also making sure that those teams all play each other at least twice because money. I mean, you want them to. Like, we want them to. As fans, we want them to, of course. But also, money. <laughs> so I think, the, I think the next big question here... Uh, those, are, those, are, those are big TV mm -hmm. eyes. I think the next big question here is, well, once, the, once the season ends here, how do they determine who plays in the uh, conference championship? Or will there be a conference championship? I think there still will be. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. How will, are you kidding? How, how will the Big Ten decipher a team let's say that let's say you got one team that fish it finishes um with one loss and then you have three other teams with two losses i mean there there's always ways e first you go by winning percentage obviously um then if you have like a say like a three-way tie then you can just do like the records. Well, if you have a two way tie, if they played each other, the winner gets in. Right. Um, if you have a three way tie, then you do like the collective, like if one of those teams is two and O versus the other two. Now, if they're all one and one against each other, that's a bit of a clusterfuck. Here, Jay, this, uh, it's winning percentage first, but when did my name change to Jay in the discord? It's short. They they shorten the. It isn't for. Oh uh, no! Yeah, your you you did your name is short. You did change it, Jared. No, I didn't. Anyway, doesn't matter. We're focusing on on the show. Um, it's winning percentage first, then head to head, then head to head against common opponent. I don't know even know if they go head to head against common opponent. Um, I think what they do is probably. They will if it's still tied. No, I, I think the third factor will like be the be the bolt uh rankings, the the, the committee rankings. Hmm. I think they just punt to the committee at that point. That's lame. Maybe. Maybe. But I think I think that's what they would do as as the third decider. Committee wants the committee doesn't care. I don't know why people always assume that the committee is is money driven. They aren't. They don't work for ESPN. They don't. I mean, that's not to say that they're completely unbiased people. They literally work for the universities the, the, and they work. You know, there, there could be conference bias. How is the committee determined? Like who's on the committee? I believe they're nominated by the person they're replacing. Or like the chairman of the existing members maybe plays a part in deciding who they bring in next. I'm not a hundred percent sure how the individual committee members are chosen. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure how that works. I, I know I've read it before. I just don't remember, and that's okay. Um, but if we're looking at anyway, I, I'm just saying I think that's I think that's the third because it just it just ensures that you're getting the two highest ranked teams possible, and not through some sort of weird circumstance does you know do you not get the best team available? I would it. say punting to the committee is what I assume they'll do. There's probably an answer for that, but I don't have it off the top of my head. If anyone finds it, let all me right. know. So for the 24 season, Jared, looking yes. at all the games here, who who do you think has the hardest in conference schedule? I know Wisconsin has to play Michigan and USC on the road in 24, and then also play Penn State at home. That's a tough pull. That um, I, have, I haven't looked at all of them incredibly closely, but that is a tough pull. Um, I mean, I also honestly, they play I, I, Nebraska, I might say, who I might say is, Illinois. 
I might see Illinois on the road to Ohio State, USC, and Sparty, and then at home they have Iowa and Michigan. I think that's, Illinois. May. That's tough. That is tough. That is very tough. Or you can look at Northwestern on the road to Ohio State and Penn, Penn State. And then at home, they have USC as well. That's that's a tough one as well. For sure. And then I'm just looking at the other games here. Iowa on the road has Ohio State, USC, and then home to Wisconsin. Not... It's not a bit. Yeah, I think I think to even get yeah, into the no, they're protected. They're protected. UCLA and USC are protected. Yeah, they, they are. Uh, I can scroll up here in the doc. USC, UCLA on the protected list. Did it cut off weird? Did I have it scrolled weird? Sorry. Then USC has or UCLA has the toughest schedule. Um. Ohio State and USC at home. Nick. Michigan away. Iowa's a tough pool in the second. Oh, Minnesota, Nebraska. It's a tough. Yeah, that's that, also a tough pool. Yeah. They're the only team playing big three. No, Wisconsin is also playing uh, three of the big teams. Yeah, that's why I that's why I mentioned Wisconsin first. Yes, then, the big oh, three. Look at look at Sparty. Sparty on the road to Michigan and Penn State. And oh, then, as in the as in the big three. Yeah. So Michigan State has Michigan and Penn State away, and then they have Ohio State at home as well. So that's, I mean, I guess that's that's a normal. <laughs> that was like a normal schedule that Michigan State used used to have. Yeah, and like. Rutgers is tough, I guess. Yeah, but who cares? <laughs> and I think the and I think the if you look at the easiest like, when we talk about like Wisconsin and UCLA, right? Like those are like second tier Wisconsin more so, but like second tier team. If we talk about like the four, Kyle, you want a tier list of teams? Who are no, the tier list of right teams now. in the Big Ten? No, don't need to right now. That's okay. I don't have a graphic ready anyway. Um, I think the easiest, if we swap that, the easiest here, maybe Indiana. The only like really big game on the road or, oh no, I'm, I'm reading that backwards. Yeah. The only one on the road that's big, I guess, Wisconsin. And then they have Penn State at home. They don't play, Ohio, they don't play Ohio State. They don't play Penn State. They don't play USC. I think Indiana may have a pretty easy schedule there. Austin says Maryland also has a pretty easy schedule. Uh, they, they, they play both away. Michigan and USC. Yeah, including going to Michigan. Yeah, Indiana, that's tough to beat. They don't they don't have to go to any of the again, we talk about like the three big teams. Well, first off, they get five home games. So that's that's a bonus. Yep. On top of that, they only have to their toughest road game is Wisconsin. And then, as as both you and Austin pointed out, avoiding. Uh, yeah, they play. Pet, they have to they do host Penn State, but they do avoid. The other. Yeah, three that, big I, th four teams. I think India, I think Indiana is the easiest. I'm just going through all the other teams. It's it's definitely the easiest because you look at all the other teams they play. I think almost all of them play two, at least two of the four top four teams in the Big Ten. Of Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, and USC. Who would you say the second tier teams are? <laughs> Kyle didn't like that. It's just second tier? Yeah, we don't we don't have to go past that. We don't have to go past that. Who are the second tier teams in the Big Ten? So if I, I go with Wisconsin. Wisconsin is, is, is uh, Wisconsin is one of the closest teams. Mich to, Michigan State, it, it Iowa. It just depends on the year. Michigan State is yeah. such a cluster. I, I'm, I'm, I know, but on average, I'm just going to put them there. Wisconsin, Michigan State, 
and Iowa, I would say is your next is your second tier. Minnesota. No, Jared, I'm not rowing that boat. UCLA, Iowa, Michigan State, Wisconsin is what Austin says. I, I think you're giving UCLA too much credit. Yeah. And and the Corn Huskers, how they've fallen. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see with Matt Rule. Um, I don't know why, but I'm I'm optimistic. Re Nebraska and Matt Rule. I mean, you, you think about the history of college football and what the Big Ten has right now. You got Ohio State, you got Michigan, Nebraska historically, and then USC as well. Like that's you look at that and like that that's some that's some blue blood blue blood red blood teams red blood. There you go, red blood teams. You have to include Penn State if we're talking history as well. But how many championships have they won? How many championships has Michigan won this side of the this side of the post World War II since, world? since since any of us has been alive since the Korean War started, Kyle? How many championships does Michigan have since any of us has been alive? No, I we're all too young. That 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 doesn't even begin to. Doesn't even begin. One half. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Spikes. One half. So again, we look at the schedule. We can, we can take a look at the 2025 schedule as well. Um, again, there is something about the sort of haphazard, inconsistent, protected rival games again that just just screams temporary to me it all just screams very temporary to me um i i think we i think we all know what's happening i i think we're all i think the only thing holding the pac-12 together right now is oregon and washington not wanting it to fall apart until they're ready to to, to leave I mean, they, they were seriously having contract discussions with um, what's it, the CW, the CW, that that thing where they that 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 network where they where they do like Riverdale and shit like that. That's that's where they're talking about putting Pac twelve games. Meanwhile, in ACC territory, you had a bunch of the teams apparently meet up with some lawyers to see, like, how ironclad, how ironclad is that, that, that 2027 or is it 2037 contract? Because, like, CW is fitting for the Pac-12. I think so. Because here, here's the thing about, here's the thing about that grant of rights deal. In regards to the ACC, your rights can't be granted or locked into the ACC if the ACC doesn't exist. That's what it boils down to, in my opinion. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I think the only thing that is stopping the SEC from just plucking. F, uh, Florida State and Clemson right now is them not wanting to destabilize the ACC and allow the Big Ten to jump in and also start claiming teams. Well, we're on we're on a fast track. I I, I will stand by this. We're on a fa fast track to the to the Big Two. Yep. I, I think we're just waiting for that first domino to fall, that 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 first Jenga block to be pulled in the ACC, and then then it's game over. Um, then it's game it's game over at that point. And if the Big Ten and the SEC were smart, they would launch a coordinated attack against the ACC. We'll all 
we'll all wake up one day. We'll all wake up one day and, you know, UNC and Virginia will be going to the Big Ten, Clemson and Florida State, and possibly Miami will be headed to the SEC. And I feel like it's all going to happen at once. But hey, that's just my opinion. Kyle, you look at this schedule. Anything else stick out to you? Whether it be the protected rivalries or or anything else uh, as far as how the schedule is breaking down? Can we talk about how the SEC uh, made the decision to stick with eight conference games? It's a joke. That is a joke. <laughs> um, can we talk? Oh, Kyle, can we please talk about how we don't have to play Rutgers in Maryland every year anymore? That is true, Jared. But now, but now we get to play teams like Northwestern and <laughs> and um, and um, well, I'm in Minnesota's every year. Yeah, but it's it's not the same. It's not it's it's not the same teams. With this schedule, with this schedule. So of the so if so there's 16 teams, obviously Ohio State's one and you and you play Michigan every year, right? So now there's 14 teams left. You have 14 teams left. And you have eight conference games to play them. Doesn't take a whole lot of quick math. And by the way, you can still add two more teams and this math still checks out. If you're Ohio state, you play, you can play every team in the big 10 in two years. Over two seasons, you can play every single big 10 team. That's exciting, right? No more waiting years and years and years to play Wisconsin or to play, you know, we got to play Nebraska a bunch, but like they fell off the schedule and then it's going to be X number of years before we're playing Nebraska. No, we can play every single team. And I don't know if they're going to go like home and homes or what, but maybe they, you know, it doesn't necessarily look like that based off of the two years we have but you can pay, play every single team in the Big Ten over two seasons. That's exciting, right? That is, yeah. I would agree. Super. No, no more. There's no more discussions of like, oh, well, whoever wins the Big Ten West will likely be the team that has the best draw from the East, right? Remember when we do that every year in the Big Ten preview? Sometimes we would determine who would win the Big Ten West simply by, okay, you know, who only has to play one of Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan? Mm -hmm. And like, oh, that, that team clearly has the fast track to win the Big Ten West. No more of that. No more divisions. No more playing Maryland and Rutgers and Indiana every single year. Play Illinois every once in a while. Etch a new date on the turtle. Remember when everyone kept trying to tell us that Illinois should be a protected rival because of that stupid wooden turtle? Can you imagine if Ohio State and Illinois were protected rivals? We, we were being yelled at by people for not making Ohio State and Illinois a protected rival because of the stupid wooden turtle. Ill Buck deserves respect. No, he doesn't. I don't care. Haters. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting uh, I'm getting diverse opinions in the chat. Bring back the live turtle. That's an even worse option. Oh, man. I'm getting both agreement and hate down in the chat right now based off of my uh, indifferent. Oh, I'm getting the several people typing right now. This is what's happened. I have gotten several people typing. We want a living Illabuck. 
Illabuck is funny, but the rivalry sucks, so it's fine. It, it, exactly, Austin. <laughs> Illabuck is fine. It's a wooden turtle. Why? I mean, who cares? Listen, there's too many damn trophy games in the Big Ten, and if you aren't Paul Bunyan's axe, I don't want to hear from you. If you are Paul Minnesota, Bunyan's axe, Minnesota, that's badass. Half of, and half of Minnesota's games are rivalry or are playing for some trophy. Yeah, but again... If, if you're Paul Bunyan's axe, I forgive you because that thing's rad. Can we can we all just agree on that? What about Paul Bunyan's Bunyans? Uh, there's two separate <laughs> Paul Bunyan trophies in the Big Ten. There is, yes. I only respect the axe, though. Just to be clear, I only respect the axe. I don't care about the other one. At all. We need a Johnny Appleseed trophy. Okay, he hear me out. We can do the Johnny Appleseed trophy. Thing is eight feet tall, Jared. <laughs> I know it's badass. We can do we can do the Johnny Appleseed trophy, but we have to bring Washington in and make them a part of it. Because I, I do believe Washington is the Apple State. I think that's I think that's the the state's nickname. Midwest apples are superior. Listen, it's true, but they're the Apple State, I think. It's true. Am I, am, I'm right on that, right? Um, J Johnny Appleseed feels like Washington and Rutgers. Dude, coast to coast? Imagine getting paired. Imagine joining the Big Ten. <laughs> imagine joining the Big Ten as Washington and having your new protected rival be Rutgers. Imagine first, Washington versus Rutgers your, being a Big Ten game. Your, 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 not only that, Jared, but it's on the road to Rutgers and it's an 11 a.m. kickoff. <laughs> Buckeye Ass Choir says uh, Rutgers versus Washington should be called the Space Ghost Trophy because it's coast to coast. I, 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 I co-sign that. I co-sign yes. that. Yes, yes. Thank you for acknowledging. It, it, that's a good reference. It's a good reference. By the way, it would, it would be Maryland, not Rutgers. It would be Maryland. It would be Maryland. And no, that was a cherry. Those are cherry trees. Never mind. I, I got nothing. I got nothing. I don't, I don't even remember the Johnny Appleseed lore that much. Where did where, is, 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 do we know where he started? Guys. Why don't we know more about Johnny Appleseed? I think it should just be a husky in a knight's helmet. Man, I missed whatever you're referring to. Squirrel. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm on my ADHD <laughs> shit tonight. I am on my ADHD <laughs> shit tonight. All right. Uh, so the 25 schedule here, Jared. Ohio State away. Johnny Appleseed Michigan. is from Ohio. Michigan State. Why didn't I know that? On the road to Michigan State, Penn State, UCLA, home to Michigan. I'm sorry, Kyle. I was still thinking about Johnny Appleseed. What are you talking about? Well, how State's schedule in the 2025 season. Oh, oh, never mind. I was misreading that. So home. So home, they have USC. And then on the road, they got Wisconsin and Michigan. Penn State. The, the rivalry that has been uninterrupted since 1993 is officially interrupted in 2025. But again, this is the plan. In my opinion, this is what they're doing. The reason Ohio State and Penn State are not playing each other every single year is because they don't want to force Ohio State, and I appreciate it. They don't want mm -hmm. to force Ohio State to play Michigan, Penn State, and USC in a single given year. And they also don't want to set up a scenario in which Ohio State and USC never play each other. Again, mm -hmm. the big four will all play each other minus one team every year. I still think there's going to be a year where somebody's going to be playing all four teams. It's going to happen. 
it will someone happen. else playing all four teams you mean yes well yes oh. it'll end up being rutgers and who cares like it's gonna, I don't, be, northwestern. I don't, it's gonna be northwestern no nah, you you can't do that they're too smart for that <laughs> they'll they'll unionize again if you, if you force them to do that they'll attempt another union um yeah the uh i i again I, it, it sucks i kind of wish ohio state and penn state still played every year but i understand <clears throat> excuse me i understand what they're doing by the way kyle also worth noting just last week on the show just last week on the show, we were making fun of the fact that Penn State and Michigan State had played each other the last game. They, like the Big Ten really tried to set up a rivalry there. They had played each other the last game of the season, every single season since 1993. We were just talking about this last week. Mm -hmm. That's also now officially dead. Good job, Big Ten. I don't care for what it's worth. Like, they really tried to squeeze a rivalry in there, and it, it never stuck. Like, they really tried to make that a thing, and just like Fletch, it never happened. Despite everyone's best effort, it just never happened. Uh, guys, how do we feel about the new schedule? I'm asking the chat. The new scheduling. It's a start scheme. It's a start. How do you how do you feel about my assertion that it looks haphazard and therefore screams temporary? Uh, how are we feeling on that assumption? No, I, I, I agree with that, Jared. This this definitely seems temporary. Why only do only two years? Well, yeah, you just don't schedule that far out, I think. I think it's basically what... I mean, I don't know. Do, do you really lay out the opponent's schedule for four years, for three years? Well, uh, way get, uh, out of conference games, you, you do. Odin's creation. Are, are you suggesting there should be a Bigfoot game? A new rivalry trophy. See, listen, Oregon and Washington. We all know you're coming. It's it's the, the secrets out there. You you're now right. Minnesota versus Washington. Are, the are there foot, are there big the Bigfoot trophy? Are there are there Bigfoot in in Minnesota? Doesn't need a god another goddamn trophy though. No, they don't. You you're a grass man. <laughs> Hey, we share the Mothman with West Virginia. That shit happened on a bridge. All right. That's both of ours. Um, Ohio, Ohio State versus Washington. <laughs> Mothman rivalry between Ohio State and West Virginia. Listen, I don't want to rivalry with West Virginia, but if we did, the trophy has to be a Mothman. It's never going to happen. Well, when the West Virginia joins in five years, that is not happening on any level. They check none of the boxes for the Big Ten. If there's any WVU fans listening, uh, sorry, not sorry. Uh, academics aren't there. Research isn't there. Population center isn't there. Recruiting territory isn't there. Doesn't grow the footprint enough. Smartest school in West Virginia. I'm sure that's not true. I'd like there, there's just no way that's true. They burn the shit out of some couches though. They do. I you have to give them that. They're very good at lighting things on fire. You're just discriminating against hillbillies, Jared. I am a hillbilly. Make no mistake, I am a hillbilly. So if I am discriminating against hillbillies, I'm allowed to because I'm one of them. Switching back to the regular podcast scene. All right, back on the regular podcast scene. Hi, everybody. Um, and a lot of coal. There is a lot of coal. Like, if if not the Mothman trophy between Ohio State and West Virginia, it would basically just be like a, a pail of coal. Right? 
Hillbilly rivalry in the Big 12. UC versus West Virginia. There you go. There you go. They need a trophy. It's a pail of coal. Right? USC. Are USC and West Virginia going to be rivals now? I think they should set that up. Is US, did I say USC? I just meant UC. You did. I just meant UC. Does UC have like a set rival? Like I know Xavier in basketball, but that doesn't translate the football. I don't think UConn translates the football either. They have a football rivalry. They are football rivalries, Jared. Okay. Marshall. Apparently Maryland. No. Penn State. No. Hit. I mean, sure, maybe. Syracuse. That's not, that's not a football thing. Virginia Tech. And Cincinnati. They're their own rivals? No, this is West Virginia. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> God. <laughs> Listen, that, that's a nice list and everything. West Virginia is only rivals pit, in my opinion. That That's a very generous, that's a very... Uh, broad definition of rivals in my opinion i mean apparently west virginia and virginia tech is a rivalry they've played 54 times i don't care okay like i i mean i guess i i, I mean but that that's back in the big 12 days or excuse me the the big east days mm -hmm. i couldn't even remember the name of the big east that's how long ago it's been Big East hasn't been a football conference in how many years at this point? Gangland, do you remember the Big East? Going to the resident young guy. What does what does it say for what does it say for UC, Kyle? Wherever you found that. Um, I was hoping for a rivalry with Baylor after that. Uh, Geno Smith and RG3 game. The problem with UC and rivals is that they don't stay in one conference very long, and that makes it difficult. UConn and UC carried on when they were in the American Conference or something. See, the fact that you said or something kind of blows that up. Memphis is a very recent rival. Did Memphis also get an invite to the Big 12? They didn't, um, did they? No. No. Question mark? So no. that's not a thing anymore. Sorry. The Memphis thing was fun for a minute. It's not a thing anymore. We move on. Miami? Do we mean guess Ohio? Do they mean <laughs> Oxford? Yeah, that's got to be Oxford. <laughs> Louisville? Sure. I mean... It makes sense geographically, at least. Pitt? Okay. In a in a loose sense. Xavier, that's a basketball thing. Yeah, I was going to say that. Well, UCF can be a thing, I guess, because they are both going to the Big 12. And West Virginia can be a big th can be a thing now that they're both in the Big 12. Can't wait for UC versus Kansas. Yeah, in basketball. All right, Kyle, that's the end of the show. I, I think the show probably ended 15 minutes ago, to be honest with you. <laughs> we had fun, and that's all that matters. Um, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, just with Ohio State winning three more um, national titles in 2023. That's it? Just three more? Did, did you know that? They, they won it in synchronized swimming for the 34th time. <laughs> 34th time in 
I want to say like 50 years or something crazy like that. Like they've won it more often than they haven't. 34 times since 1977. Someone else do that math. Yeah. Yeah. We are a swimming school. Uh, it's like what, also 50. Wh- hold on. No, I don't feel like doing I'm not doing math while the recording's on me. Um, they, they also national title and pistol and women's pistol. Oh, women's. I know the men's pistol team is like co-ed kind of dominant co-ed pistol. Oh, it's co-ed pistol. Women's pistol and co-ed pistol. Those oh, so three both. national titles. Yep. So the women really carried the men then, because I assume oh, that yeah. means that the men didn't win. The only national titles that Ohio State. Oh, no, that's not right, because the um, basketball one, too. Where, where, where the hell is this list coming from? Uh, basketball. Oh, here we go. Never mind. I'm looking at here. Um, I'm just looking here. See if there is see if I'm missing anything else. Nope. No, we're good. Um, so I was looking at national titles, Jared. OK. Are we are we going into some president's cup coverage here? No, just 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 with just comparing two two teams, that's all. Just two teams and just want to just to point out that Ohio State has more national titles than the team up north. Is this in everything? What what are we looking at here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's total team titles, two, two total team titles, so Ohio State has 73 and the team up north has 57. What time frame is this? Uh, Wait, is this all sports in what time frame? Yeah, this is all sports. All sports, but in what time frame? Ever since they've no been doing national titles. No way. Zero chance in hell. But that's every national title ever. The swim team has half of that. The synchronized swim team has half of that for Ohio State. They do. There's no they way. do. Yes. No, it's true. It's true. Yeah, I don't know, man. So we're, we're the synchronized swimming. Gets they honestly have like half of that. Yeah. Yes, Jared. I, I find this hard to believe. <laughs> OK, Michigan, by the way, also has been open for uh, like 50 Mich- more years. Yeah, and Michigan has only won six national titles in all sports this uh, millennium. Really? The, the, the Ohio State synchronized swimming team has more than that. The, the champions of the West, so they say, right? Yeah, exactly. Six. They've won one in field hockey, three in men's gymnastics. Yeah, that's respectable. Um, their most recent is in 21 in women's gymnastics, their only title. And then one in men's swimming and diving. I think and, the one only, in, and one in softball, missed one in softball. So the, one, the only two, thing there I feel like clowning three, on, to be uh, fair, the only thing there I like would clown on would be the field hockey. Seven. I apologize. Seven. It's still seven, but yeah, you're right. Like (laughs) women's uh, synchronized diving has more than swimming, not synchronized diving, synchronized swimming, synchronized swimming has more basically underwater dance. I'm just saying they're the real water buffaloes in in the, in the statistics, in those statistics, 15 this millennium. Just just for the synchronized swimmers. 15 out of 23. Well, 24, 24 if you're counting the year 2000 as well. 2000 was in the previous millennia, if we're being technical about it. Because you didn't start at year zero. You started Since at year two, one. All right. All right. We're, we're not, not going to argue about that. Therefore, this. the century clocks over... Not not in the millennium in this case. Clocks over not at two thousand, but at two thousand one. All right, all right. We got to end the episode. I'm here, Jared. right. We're ending the episode here, Jared. All right.
That was that was like that was like the peak well actually maneuver like 25 years ago. <laughs> All right. The night's ending music uh band out of Columbus. They are called Slim Fit. Um never played them on the podcast before, so uh we're happy to be doing that today. Um name of the song is Pineapple Pizza. Um if you're watching this on YouTube then uh, you can click the link to listen to the song down in the uh, down in the show notes. If you're just listening to the podcast version of this, all you have to do is not turn us off. So, Kyle, with all of that being said, I would like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Slim Fit. <laughs> 